Hello everyone and welcome to another live conversation with Minji Lee, nine time professional winner, also one time major champion and also the number four current ranked player on the LPGA Tour. Mm -hmm. Welcome overall. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited for a conversation today. So we've done a couple of these so far here down live at the Masters. We had Padraig Harrington on uh, two nights ago, and then yesterday we had David Duvall on. And one of the things that we really found to be one of the most interesting conversations overall has really been like, at what point and how did you get into golf? And when did you kind of really know that this might be something you would be special at? Um, well, my mom's a, a teacher. Uh, she taught golf before, so she kind of got me into the game of golf and... Um, my whole family played, so we're a really big golfing family. As you know, my brother is currently playing in the Masters, and he probably made the cut today, so <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's really exciting. Yeah, um, so like my brother picked it up before I, I did, and then I was just kind of a little bit interested. Um, here and there, I'd go to the driving range with my mom, and I think that's kind of how I got into it, and just sort of how I picked it up. And then, you know, were there... Was there a singular moment or was there a tournament or were you playing kind of just for fun where you're like, hey, I'm pretty good at this and maybe this is something I want to do for a career? Um, I pretty much went through all like the stages that I wanted to. So like I got into the state program, um, the junior program um, in my state. And then I went, got into the national program when I was, I think, 15 or 16. So I think I sort of went up through every single stage. Um, and then I, when I was around 16, I went and I went I came to America and I won the US junior so I think that was sort of the kind of my flip where I really wanted to turn pro and um, play on the LPGA so um, yeah that was sort of when I thought I really wanted to turn professional and you're originally from Australia yeah I was born and raised there and then so how long were you there before you eventually kind of came over to the states especially for your LPGA tour kind of ambitions um so pretty when I was 18, I went to Q school, and so straight that was pretty much after year 12, like doing high school. So I pretty much came over and when I was 18. Yeah. yeah. And we talk so much about like professional athletes, and everyone kind of thinks about them just in the context of you know what we see them do on the field or on the golf course or or wherever else they're really competing. But kind of what goes on off of it, especially knowing that you were coming from Australia to the United States. Did you have your family as a support? How hard was it kind of to transition over while you're also trying to remain competitive? Uh, I mean, I was really lucky to have my mom travel with me. Um, she traveled the first five years with me um, full time. So I was really lucky um, to have that support. And, um, you know, being on the road by yourself is really, really different. So um, it was great help from her. And with that, I was, I think, um, able to transition a bit more smoothly. I was. I think much more comfortable after the first two years. Um, I mean, I won in my rookie year, so that kind of got me settled a little more. So um, yeah, I, I think everything kind of went smoothly through like my rookie transition from amateur to pro and yeah. How, how important do you think that kind of first win was and how much did it kind of propel you or set you to be on the stage to eventually win a major? I think when you like first start out, you definitely not feeling as you know confident like you don't know how you're going to go in the first year um i think i won in may it was like kind of in the middle of my um rookie year so um it was it was good it was just a good like confidence um booster for me i just um it just gave me a little more reassurance that i could i can keep, compete with the best in the world and i can come and play out here on the lpga so yeah. And good. so to, to kind of put you on the spot a little bit, we've heard a little bit from Padraig and from, from David Duvall around yeah. what goes on in between the ropes. Okay. Um, you know, what was kind of your, your uh, most fearful situation in between the ropes, either playing with someone you idolized um, or really kind of someone that you didn't really get along with um, while you're actually competing on a round? Um, you know, I didn't, I don't really have that. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm pretty chill. Like I'm super, super relaxed um, when I play. So I don't really have that. To be honest, <laughs> are there are there many um, you know ladies on the LPJ tour that kind of you know are either is there a lot of rapport during a round um, or some folks you know relatively quiet and kind of really focus on competing? Um, I think I'm more of the quiet ones, but a lot of the girls like to chat. Um, everyone's really friendly, so I don't think we really. I mean, we're all 
just chatty. If, if I'm playing <laughs> with my friends, we just kind of, you know, it's kind of just like a Sunday round with your friends, you know. Um, but no, I, I don't think anybody's really that much of an enemy to each other. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, sort of, um, you know, leading up to, to your first major win um, at the Evian Championship, um, at what point during the tournament did you really start to realize that, like, one, of course I'm competitive, but two, like, this is really kind of mine to, to win? Oh, I mean, it was after all four rounds and when I was going into the playoff, um, you know, that's pretty much when the tournament started for me. Yeah. So um, I had a really great round um, on the final round to even get into the playoffs. So, yeah, that was... That was oh well. I think maybe the second shot on um, on the on that first playoff hole. I I knew I had it in the bag. Really, that's yeah. amazing. Um, and you know, so sort of seeing a lot of success and having had success on the LPGA tour. Um, you know, knowing all the other um, players out there who have the ambitions of being successful on the LPGA tour. What do you think has kind of been the differentiating factors for you and maybe some other of the more successful? ladies on tour versus maybe some of those that haven't really had the breakthrough success? Um, you know, everybody works equally as hard. I think um, just for me, I I really worked on some different parts of my game to, you know, be able to win, um, I think, early on in my career and even now. So um, I think everybody's path is different and I'm not really sure what differentiates me from other people, but I mean, my strength in my game is my ball striking, so um, I think that re has really helped me, um, you know, be one of the top players in the world. It's funny because so much of the game now has really become around the analytics and, you know, again, as far as you can drive it, just to be close to the hole and increase your probability, probably to have, you know, a greater chance at birdie overall. Mm -hmm. um, how much do you think ball striking, iron play and everything else um, continues to matter as much? Or do you think really over time, those that can hit it further will always be a little bit more successful? I mean, like being able to hit it far is, on the women's tour is like, is like, I mean, it gives you a very, very big advantage. So I think it's always going to be a big part of, um, you know, having, being able to score well, but obviously short game, you know, putting is really, really important too. So. Um, I think both come hand in hand. Like if you hit it longer, you'll you'll be able to hit shorter clubs into the holes. Um, I mean, the holes are not going to get any longer from what you have right now. So, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, if you hit it closer, then your putting will be easier, less stress. So, you know, everything works hand in hand. So, yeah. And then just kind of being down here in Augusta at the Masters, your brother's participating, as we mentioned, hopefully mm -hmm. makes a cut. Yeah, um, I think he, I think he will. Okay, yeah. that's great. Um, you know, kind of thinking back, you got a chance to play the par three course a little bit, and we're in, you know, kind of caddy for your brother. What was yeah. that experience like, and were your parents here to kind of help and uh, share in that moment? Um, no, it was it was really cool. I mean, being able to be with him and experience the Masters with him for the first time is um, it's pretty special. I mean, it's really really special actually. Um, yeah, just to see him competing with all the guys out here, I think is. Um, one of the dream come true for him so um no it's pretty cool is, is any other family here with you all or uh just mom and dad just mom and dad yeah that's exciting and too. Our coach, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah do you two share the same coach uh yeah we have oh, the same cool. coach yeah okay and then so kind of um you know thinking about you and your brother um how competitive do you two get with each other when you're kind of just playing a friendly round oh. uh you know in the off season uh we to be honest we don't really like play too much together because like trying to fit in our schedules is really really hard but when we do go we just a little bit of bragging rights that that's about it yeah. <laughs> so we have a few uh, members here in the audience um our ceo of yield treat malin mahir is here uh, malin maybe you could ask the first question <laughs> sure so what is your favorite course to play around the world oh um well my one of my favorites was lake merced but we're not going there anymore um it's getting renovated, but I, I don't know. I'm, I, all of them are my favorite because I want to win all of them. <laughs> so, so how about maybe on a more personal level, which course means the most to you? Oh, um, I mean, obviously Evian, my first major win. It really means a lot to me. Um, and I think also my rookie, when I was a rookie, when I won for the first time, that really means a lot to me as well. It was at Kingsville, so the one in Williamsburg. Thank you. 
Quick question. So, um, in Aussie, mm -hmm. um, your parents would have to drive you to the golf course every week? Oh, almost every day. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And were you sort of um, unique in that respect, or did you have other friends that also were going every day? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, how does that happen? You know, it seems like such a commitment by your parents. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I had a pretty hard work. I mean, like, I, I'm a hard worker. Like, I have a great work ethic. Um, I was really disciplined for my age, like, growing up, I think. So I had a very, like, a routine that I always followed. And I, I don't know, my parents really, I mean, they pushed us not, I mean, we just did it more on my own. I did it more on my own accord. Mm -hmm. So I think um, they were just there to encourage us to do what we wanted to do. So I, I mean, yes, it was a um, big uh, sacrifice for them to, you know, I'll always be grateful for them to, you know, driving us around, you know, having, um, going to the golf course with us every Sunday and caddying for us um, and I think as much as we wanted it um, they wanted it for us as well so oh, that's nice. yeah no it's just that people don't realize that sacrifice that parents make oh right? yeah for sure swimmers um, yeah golfers mm -hmm. I mean, whatever football whatever you want yeah and so I wondered if your parents I mean you mentioned that one of your parents is over here now or, or um, yeah mums with um, have been supporting my brother the past yeah. few weeks. So I mean, it's lovely, and as a as a father, I think it's just the ultimate awesomeness. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's been well, great. Obviously. Oh yeah, I mean, my parents love watching us. So yeah, no, it's really it's pretty great. So on that point as well, you know, when you're not kind of competing or training or practicing, what do you kind of do to relax and kind of um, have some fun? Um, usually when I'm home, I like going to the beach and just, you know, I'm a big foodie, so I, I love looking for new restaurants and going and, um, you know, going eating with my friends and just hanging out. Um, that's pretty much what I do in my downtime. Well, so that, what, what's your favorite restaurant currently? Oh, that's, uh, that's way too hard. <laughs> <laughs> what city is your favorite restaurant in? Oh, every city has amazing, yeah. I mean, good places to eat, so, oh, I don't know. I mean, New York is pretty great. Dallas is pretty good as well. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I live in Dallas. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's where you spend most of your time now in the off season, especially? Um, not in my off season, but in my weeks, um, when I have a week off in America, then I go, go home to Dallas. And then, so when you were kind of, you know, beginning out with your um, amateur career, who were some of the golfers that you looked up to and really aspired to become? Um, I watched Lorena um, on TV. She was always been kind of a big role model, but Kari Webb has been really um, involved in like my career and just in my amateur, um, amateur stuff growing up. So yeah, I think, and obviously Tiger on TV and even now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then when you kind of think about knowing you've won one major, um, what else do you kind of think about as far as some of the big ambitions you have for your career? Um, and is there one tournament that, you know, again, outside of it, winning the Evian again, that you're really kind of like, this is the one that I want? Oh, um, since I was little, US Open has been my big goal. So that's the one that I've always sort of wanted to win. And where's it going to be this year? It's at Pine Needles. Oh. Yeah. In, Very uh, cool. Yeah. So, related to the previous question, yeah. you're a field raiser and uh, so you know for the girls, little girls that are listening to this podcast mm -hmm. and, and the women who aspire to uh, to be like you, what is your message to them? Um, I think just, well to little girls I think I'd say um, just have fun, don't take it too seriously, I mean you can do all the things that you want to do and still be where you are you know I I would probably have maybe spent a little more time with my friends when I was little you know um, I think just as long as you're enjoying what you're doing um, I don't think you're really ever on the wrong path do you go into every tournament thinking that you're gonna win uh, yes and then, and <laughs> I mean, uh, bluntly, yes. Yeah. yeah. And every round, thinking that you're going to shoot a 62. Um, you know, I think no, but um, I don't think that way. But I do 
prepare myself to the best um, of to my ability so I can perform as as well as I can but you're not always going to feel a hundred percent in every round so I think sometimes you just got to play with what you've got that day and um, try and post a, post a good score so so to that point you know how often do you feel like you're playing at your absolute peak where you know that everything's firing on all cylinders versus how much do you know you just have to kind of scrape around scrape together the best round that you can knowing that you just kind of need to stay in contention then hopefully everything kind of comes together by sunday to be fair i don't know if i've ever felt like i'm absolutely gonna hit hit it amazing that day you know like i i mean you can be confident in yourself but i don't know if any of any of us feel like we're gonna shoot 60 that day or you know i mean i just take one shot at a time and whatever's in front of me. I don't like to get ahead of myself. So um, just uh, focus on every single shot. And you can only really prepare for that first shot you hit anyway. So that's what I do. And then, you know, just think about course setups and how challenging they can be. Um, how much do you think the strategy in advance really matters versus how much is it really just handling what you're presented, whether you, you know, maybe have a, uh, you know, something in the woods, maybe a pole, a pole draw or something. Um, how much of that kind of matters more to react versus how much is it really about the strategy and the planning ahead of time? Definitely, um, you know, the planning is important. I mean, all the prep that you do before a tournament is, um, is I think, is very, very important um, just to like figure out where you, where you want to go and how you want to manage yourself around each hole. Um, and like when you actually are playing, the only variable is the wind or like kind of like your direction where you you can change a little bit just when you get um, to that hole but I think you should already know sort of where you want to hit it around um, a golf course before you get to the first round and then you know when you kind of look back now on your relatively young career um, are there things that you kind of look back on maybe it was five ten years or so ago that you wish you did a little bit differently or are you pretty happy with how things have turned out, knowing obviously that there's so much ahead of you as well? Um, I think I did everything to the best of my ability. Like to, I mean, I did my very best every single moment of my career. So um, I don't think I would really do that much different. I mean, I, I worked really hard to get here and, and I'll continue to work very, very hard um, for every other tournament that I have. But um, yeah, no, I, I might, Maybe if I did have to change something, maybe um, take some time to like spend with my friends a little more or, you know, but I guess without sacrifice you, I wouldn't be here today, so. So if I go over for anyone for any last questions here for Benji? Yeah. Oh, it's quite remarkable that you and your brother both play at such a high level. Do you have other siblings? No, it's just the two of us. And did your parents golf? Like, how did they introduce you to golf? Um, yep. Yeah, so my mom used to teach golf, um, and my dad's always been around golf and just like other sports. So we kind of picked up different sports before we started golf. So, okay. so yeah. what other what other sports did you play before golf? And um, how so, long did it take you to realize <laughs> golf was it? Um, I, so I swam before, probably for like two, three years, um, like seriously. And then my brother played basketball, but he was always into golf in the beginning, from the beginning. So I was sort of like, oh, I don't know if I really like it. But um, after a few years of swimming, it was really, really tough. And I was probably never tall enough anyway. So um, my mom was like, let's try golf. <laughs> so. I think I was probably, I was pretty young, probably like t 11, 12, and then... No cricket? Oh, well, women's cricket wasn't so big then, so <laughs> <laughs> it is now, um, yeah. but no, yeah. There's always kind of, an, I think, an ongoing debate, especially now, especially with parents and, and you know, children who are really excelling in sports around mm -hmm. whether or not you really focus on one and yeah. develop that singular skill set and like really just focus on that mm -hmm. versus kind of doing you know, a multiple uh, sports, yeah. um, you know, kind of youth. Um, was there anything specifically to swimming that you've kind of applied to golf or do you kind of wish that you, maybe you had used that time and spent it more on golf at an earlier age? No, I mean, because I was pretty young, I, I don't think, I mean, I loved swimming when I was doing it. So um, even that, I think I probably took away from it just the discipline of how much you have to like practice and, you know, 
like be on top of your routine so maybe that's what I carried on into my golf but yeah I mean I really loved swimming and I really like playing golf so oh but do you have the same pre-shot routine every shot yes yeah I do <laughs> what is it <laughs> um so I take my practice swing and then I check the wind and then I go in to hit my shot so every single time it's like that except for my chipping and obviously putting it's a little different but every shot I do that and then every putt I hit is the same routine for my putting and then same for chipping. What are you thinking about during that especially with your practice swing are, are there certain mechanics that you're kind of thinking about um, um, or what are you trying to what are you trying to think probably about? Probably not the mechanics I'm just probably feeling like how far I'm going to hit it so just like that type the, the swing for the for the length mm -hmm. so just the feel rhythm yeah. and then you know we've, we've had some um, folks here uh, the last couple of days and one of the big questions has always been you know how do you not hit a tree so what kind of goes through your head at that point how to not <laughs> <laughs> aim away from the tree it's a perfectly good answer it wasn't acceptable yesterday but it was a great answer <laughs> what's the what's the role of the audience like does it motivate you or does it distract you like you know, oh, just the like the crowd. Um, I think it's, I think it's great to have a crowd. I mean, it's just so, it was so different over like COVID when we didn't have a crowd, and once everybody came back, it was like this is why we play. Like the atmosphere, the mood, and just like the cheers and the claps. I think it really, like, elevates to a different level when you have a crowd. Yeah. And then, you know, we've kind of talked about this with some other folks as well, but um, there's a lot of information that you take in before you, you, you um, approach a shot. You yeah. mentioned the wind a couple of times, the lie, whether it's above your feet, below your feet. Um, how do you also kind of take all that information and then distill it down to a singular thought so you can kind of stay focused on the execution? Um, you know, when I like decide a shot, like, um, what to do it's like all before I even do that practice swing so I've already decided what I'm gonna do so I sort of it's really quick when we do it because it's really quite subconscious like we already know that it's you know the winds going one direction and then our lie is that way or you know we've already analyzed that so for us as golf I mean as a professional golfer I think we do it very subconsciously so I I mean, really, when we're doing our practice swing for that shot, we have already take it, taken it all into account and just do that, that practice shot, swing for that shot. Yeah. yeah. And then, so, you know, when, you, when you've either played with or you've seen or heard, you know, about some amateurs, uh, including myself, um, what are some of the things that you think that we get wrong as we approach golf? Um, that you have to hit it hard, I think, and just sometimes with like chipping and putting and stuff it just gets a little too complicated when it can be really really simple and you, that's all you need I think maybe just overthinking it a little bit <laughs> very fair any last questions we all have frustrating shots and golf at times can be very frustrating mm -hmm. how do you deal and recoup from the frustrating shots um i just take a breath um usually after i hit a bad shot or you know, I just, I just kind of acknowledge it and then I let it go. I'm really good at letting it go, so I don't. I try not to take it into that, um, into the next shot. Yeah. I I guess it's not a solution, but <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> I was just gonna ask him, um, what's been the biggest lesson you've learned since uh, becoming pro? Um, that probably I don't have to be perfect. Um. You know, you know, even with like external things like traveling and you know, um, just you know, you can lose your clubs at any time, but you sort of can't take it too seriously. You know, like obviously you want to find them, but if you really internalize it, then it's just gonna ruin the rest of your, you know, your game. And I think, yeah, just sometimes you have to go with it, and it's all about embracing, I guess, the life as a professional golfer. So. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm not sure how long you've worked with your caddy at this point, but, um, you know, what are, what are some of the disagreements that you all have on the course? Or do you usually always kind of like agree <laughs> on the approach and the shot or sometimes you just have to overrule your caddy? Um, you know, 
usually we try to be on the same page, but sometimes when we're like reading a green or、um, you know just looking at the wind, sometimes it's a little bit wrong. You know, the, sometimes the wind can swirl, and you're like, oh, I don't think it's this way. But I think for the most part, we're pretty much on the same page. I mean, we work really well together, but I think maybe the biggest thing is like the lie on the green for me. Yeah. Do you do you solicit the input kind of on the read overall? Or do you kind of just、um, only ask on select occasions?、Um, no, we usually read it together. But I think it's my choice at the end of the at, at the end of the day. I'm hitting the shots, so、um, yeah, I just try to I just take into account what I t- think is right, and then because I I mean I should know I'm the professional, so I should know <laughs> it the best. So yeah. <laughs> So, do any last questions here for the audience? This may have been asked, but do you have a, a pre-match ritual or routine?、Um, like、before, maybe? You know, to be to be honest, I don't do anything special. You know, I just you know do my stretching, go have go eat, and then go do my one hour you know practice. But no, I don't think I do anything too too different. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so with that, Minji, thank you so much for joining us today. This was really an incredible conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Minji. Thank you.